May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, o Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Okay. okay. A lot of things have happened this week, and we have a baptism. So I'm going to talk about sheep. Because, when in doubt, seek solace in the ancient symbols of the church is what I've decided to do. Um, I, the, for, for us, the image of sheep and the shepherd uh, is one of those images, unlike loving one's neighbor, where we really have to do a bit of digging to, to uncover what kind of stuff this meant for really the vast, vast majority of the history of the church, where... For the vast, vast majority of human civilization, there were always shepherds. The idea that there would not be shepherds on all the hilltops along with their flocks of sheep would have been an unthinkable thought for most of human history. So this is really one of those enduring symbols that always used to make sense. And now, all of us in the city, it's possible that we have some shepherds among us. I, there may be shepherds. But for the vast majority of us, uh, we are not shepherds, and we do not see sheep very often. And usually now, the word, the, when we most describe sheep, someone being like sheep, it's usually um, mindless followers, sort of almost like lemmings, where we just kind of just absently follow anything that makes a noise. Uh, and that's not really who sheep were, although, you know, not entirely. They were kind of like that, but they're far more, you know, friendly creatures. So... Um, I'm going to describe sheep, and what I want to do is I'm going to describe what sheep are like from my research on the internet. And I want to, and, and to be honest, at, at the time, sheep would have been meant to contrast goats. Sheep and goats were always in flocks together because they ate different things. So you could put them both together and they wouldn't eat each other's food. So a lot of times in the Bible when we hear sheep described, it's sheep and goats living together and us being called to be like sheep and not necessarily like goats. Okay? So we're going to go through this, and I'm going to let the symbol do its thing. Okay. Sheep were strongly gregarious. They were friendly. I, I had read somewhere that they were mean, and they used to bite the sheepdogs, and maybe they did snip at the sheepdogs. But sheep overall are friendly creatures. They definitely do like to follow a leader. Unlike deer and gazelles, they don't defend their territory violently. They have a territory. They have a home. They love where they are. They don't want to move, but they won't fight for it. They'll run. They like other people, other sheep in their flock, and they will go out of their way to be physically very close to the other members in the flock, as opposed to other grazing animals that tend to be, want to be left on their own. They will often simply follow the first sheep that moves, <laughs> they can become really stressed out when they're separated from their flock. Their closest relationships are their family. They cling to places that they know. And if you leave them fenced in for a while and you remove all the fences, they don't tend to leave. And they stay there anyways. Sheep uh, tend to exhibit the flock-type behavior with usually groups of four or more. Their defense against violence is to flee from violence. They're food-oriented. They like it. And they follow humans, usually because they're the ones that feed them. And in fact, people discovered that rather than using a lot of really complicated techniques to keep to get the sheep moving from A to B, you could just take a bucket of food and carry it from A to B, and the sheep will follow the bucket. So when we have in the story of the Old Testament, uh, God leaving the people of Israel out of Egypt and into Israel, God uses uh, essentially a sacred bucket of food called manna, and people keep eating that food all the way to Israel. Sheep are actually pretty smart. They're about as smart as cows, which, as far as animals go, are reasonably smart. They're not as smart as sheep. Presumably not as smart as dolphins. But they're not stupid. Sheep remember faces for years. They can tell how you're feeling. They can differentiate different emotional states. And they learn their own names. 
Now, goats don't tend to clump like sheep do. They don't like to be close to other, other goats. They tend to be off on their own. They're highly intelligent, very independent. Uh, they tend to separate their young away from the flock. Sheep tend to, when, when sheep have new babies, they tend to, lambs, they tend to uh, collect them all together in a, in a bunch. And, and the flock takes care of them. Goats tend to not trust other goats, and so they lead their young away and raise them on their own. Goats don't run from violence, but turn and fight. They're more athletic than sheep, and they live together. You can kind of get a sense of what the church is kind of like. We're in a world filled with lots of goats, and we don't dislike the goats. The goats are great. They eat their own food. They do their own thing. And there's also sheep. And what differentiates the sheep is that they seem to love each other more. They tend to love their young and take care of them. They know their names. And they follow the shepherd that feeds them. Either physically feeds them or, I think in the church's case, spiritually feeds them as well. And it seemed natural that we, this is who we are. As a church. And what kind of threw me for a loop after doing all my research, I guess, although it was not the most, this was not a doctoral thesis on sheep research, I admit, <laughs> is that rather than identifying or naming us as sheep, in a lot of ways, we may be called to be like sheep. It's very tempting to want to live the goat life. They're so clever and they can climb up those rocks really fast. And they're all independent and kind of tough. Uh, apparently when wolves come in, you want a few goats there because the goats will kick the wolves, right? And the sheep just keep running. Goats are impressive, but we are called to be like sheep, where our priorities are love, community, peace, the shepherd, and really good food. (laughs) And we're called to be content with where we are, to not necessarily wander, but to just be at peace, to be comfortable with who we are, with our family, with our friends, with our community, and to just be at peace and eat a lot. And there's something wonderful about that. So I'm actually kind of pleased now to be called a sheep personally. This is sort of an appeal to all of you to to reclaim the sheep moniker as Christians. So you can say, ah, yes, I claim I am like a sheep, but in like the real... The real definition of sheep on Wikipedia. I'm like that. So uh, that's all I want to say. You can do with this what you will. I, 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 can't, I can't resist saying that. I, I, on my, I was on vacation last week and I saw a stand-up comic. I guess I'll leave you with this. And he, he was an Irish. His name is Tommy Tiernan. Have you guys heard of him or seen him on like YouTube or whatever? Tommy Tiernan. He's really funny. He's an Irish comic. He's mostly in Ireland almost all the time. And he goes from one end of the island to the other. And he grew up Roman Catholic. And he wanted to give us, he just started telling these, these stories. Uh, one of the stories was uh, a man leaves his home and is gone for nine days. And when he comes back through the hedge, he plays a song no one has ever heard before. End of the story. And he said, what the church, what he says, what the church has lost, he said, I now understand every word of the church, every word the church says, and it's awful. The church needs to tell more stories like this. So I was like, okay, Tommy Tiernan, I'm inspired. So I'm going to give you a bunch of sheep info. Be like sheep, not like goats. And I'm going to leave you with that. Amen. Oh,